Welcome back to New Mexico Media Makers. Joining us now is a local producer and actor, James Blackburn. Nice Welcome. to meet you guys. Glad to have you here. Yeah. It's an honor to be here. I really appreciate it. So now you're a, a local actor, a producer, but you also have more hats than that. And we were talking about head size earlier, but we'll get yes. to that in a second, <laughs> since you and I share big yes, heads. Head. Yes, we have massive brains. <laughs> massive brains. <laughs> That's what we like to say. Yes. <laughs> so what else do you do besides produce and act? Uh, well, I pretty much, I try to make a living doing anything legal, is what I've always said. Mm. Because uh, I'm a jack of all trades. I've painted houses, I've uh, stained decks, you know, I've worked at grocery stores, and luckily enough, I've been able to work in the movie business off and on over the last seven or eight years here in, in New Mexico more than anywhere else. Although I did get to travel when I was working on The Lone Ranger, which was was a real thrill to get to go to, to the different states that they were filming in. Oh, I bet, because everyone's been talking, the buzz has been about the long range yes. and everything. So what do you think the finished product, how's it, how's it looking from an insider's point of view? Well, from what, everything that I saw, and I worked on the movie for almost an, the, the seven months that they were here in town, uh, it's gonna be awesome. You know? <laughs> and that's really all I can say. I can't tell you anything else, but check it out because it's gonna be a beautiful film. And, and, and I kind of describe it a little bit as Pirates of the Caribbean in the Old West because it has some of that sort of style mm -hmm. where there's high drama and action and a little bit of humor right. here and there, you know. So it was, a, it was an honor to work, to work on it. Now, you remember as a kid watching the Lone Ranger TV mm -hmm. show. So obviously it's going to be very different. It's kind of updated. Yeah, yeah. There's some similarities to the original, obviously, and with storyline and stuff like that. And then obviously the, the infamous mask, you know. Uh, but, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, you know, I had to go back and watch all the old episodes while I was working on the movie. They didn't require me to. I just decided to do sure. it myself because uh -huh. I thought it would be uh, interesting to see how it started again. And uh, it was on every Saturday morning uh, when I was a mm -hmm. kid, so I watched it every Saturday morning. It was always a good lesson, and there was you know, nobody was spraying blood or anything like that. It was just a, you know, a lesson about morality and and being a, you know, a better person basically. And, and and that's what this Lone Ranger movie feels like to me as well. It's, so do you think that? in order to teach lessons about morality and, and that sort of thing, that you kind of have to couch it a different way now for today's audiences, basically, so that they don't feel like they're being preached to or yeah, you know, it's an old message? Yeah, well, they, they, I think they sneak it in without shoving it down people's throats. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, you know, it's still there. But, you know, and it's Disney, so it's obviously going to be made for, for a younger audience as well. So. What, what, so what's the deal on Johnny Depp's headdress? That People have been talking about yes. that. What is it? What's the bird. Happening? Yes. Yeah. Uh. Yes. It, is that uh, a pet or what do we have going on there? <laughs> that, it's on his head. That's really all I can say about it at this point. You know, uh, uh, When you're on a big movie like that, you make promises and you sign paperwork that right. you're not going to reveal too much. So, mm -hmm. so uh, And to be honest with you, Johnny actually got the idea, though, from a painting. If you look online, you can find the actual painting online. The same thing with the striped paint on his face and everything and the bird oh, on wow. the head. It's all a famous painting from, uh, it's a pretty recent painting, I believe, but, but yeah, definitely Google it if you get a chance because you'll find the, the photo that, or the, the painting that he used for the inspiration of it. So it is a bird because I couldn't tell from the photos I was looking at if it was a bird or just a bad hair day. And uh, it, it was kind of a combo, you know, it was a bird with a bad hair day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it was great. And uh, I, you know, what else can I say about it? It's the greatest experience of my life so far. And, and the reason why I say so far at the end is because I know there's another movie around the corner and, right. you know, that'll probably top that one, you know, because every movie I've worked on and I've been fortunate enough to be a part of has been a great experience and it's just, you know, great memories and, and I love doing it. So speaking of hair, you're a very hirsute gentleman, if I may say so myself. Thank you. Have you found that that works for you negatively or positively as far as the uh, hair? It, it, it varies. It just depends on the movie or the producer, you know, wh whoever I meet along the way, people, uh, you know, they, they either take me or leave me, you know, <laughs> and, and most time they take me. I think people realize that I'm a nice guy and that I'm pretty laid back and relaxed, but mm. when it comes time to do the scene on camera, whatever intensity it needs, mm. I, I'm there and I'm ready to do it as soon as, as soon as it's as soon as they yell rolling, I'm, I'm on. So. so as an actor, of course, you're conscious of image and, and your appearance, that sort of thing. What if somebody says, okay, I'd, I'd love you for this part, but you need to shave your head because we need a bald insurance salesman. And I would do it. Uh, for the right part, my head, my beard, anything can go. It's all optional. I'll even shave my back hair for, for a movie part if I had any. That's how Catherine yeah. got this part. Yeah. We had to make her shave all oh, of her back hair. Good otherwise, job. Yeah, to my contract. Mm. It was great. I didn't even notice she there was any She fought us for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so. mm. but, but yeah, it, for the right movie role, I would shave my head. I mean, 
I know it seems like a lot of hair, but trust me, for the right role, uh, I'll change my appearance to what it needs to, to look like. And, and you'll see in the, in the tape, uh, the tape, like I actually brought a tape, you know? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> no. What? But you'll see in, in the, the clip that I brought a variety of different looks that I've achieved over the last few years with the beard and without and mustache and without and, you know, and the only thing I haven't done so far is Amish and I think that'd be <laughs> kind of fun actually, you know, just shave the stash and go for an Amish look for a, a movie or something, you know? We haven't done an Amish film here, have we? Uh, well, there was a, I believe in In Plain Sight there was an uh, episode with Amish in it. And, uh, and I, I thought about getting on that, but I, I was too busy at the time doing something else. That's an idea for something you could write, maybe uh, an Amish-Mexican restaurant sort of thing. We could get all these <laughs> cultural influences combined. Yeah, that would be interesting. And you could even combine some other types of food in there, too, like Amish food. You know? What is Amish food? <laughs> it's nature-based food, I guess. I don't know. I, it, what's weird about Amish people and me is that I grew up in Indiana, and there's a ton of Amish people there. Oh, right. And one yeah. of my best friends when I was a kid was actually Amish, and uh, I would stay at his house, and we would eat, you know, chicken and dumplings and just, mm -hmm. you know, typical farm type right. of food, you know, stuff like that. So we've talked about how diverse your look is, and you've done work on The Lone Ranger. Tell us about this film, 420. It's been getting some praise lately, correct? Uh, well, actually, it's been around for five years now, believe, or four and a half years about. Uh, but for some reason, it's a movie that just won't go away. It's like how George Lucas keeps releasing Star Wars. <laughs> for, the 420 <laughs> movie is my Star Wars. It never goes away. It just Great. keeps, keeps uh, reliving. I think it's because we have a, an April 20th every year. And so, you know, people sort of celebrate secretly on that day and some not so secretly. <laughs> uh, speaking of that... The 420 movie, five-year anniversary, is this April 20th, and we're going to be doing a re-premiere of it at the Guild Cinema. So go online and look that up, uh, guildcinema.com. They have all the schedule on there for everything. Congratulations. So, so is the film about 420? Yes. The funny thing about it is it's a stoner comedy where uh, two guys are looking for stuff all day and they never, they never find it. So <laughs> I've had days like that. Yeah, yeah, I I it's a stoner that. comedy where nobody gets high. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn. Well, until the end, but I don't want to give away too much. But, but yeah, check it out. It's silly. It's over the top. And we were, we were acting the whole time, guys. There was no, uh, no <laughs> realism to that yeah, movie at all. True. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Acting. Mm, <laughs> acting, they say. Yes. Well, now, is this featured on the, the reel that you brought with you? Yeah, there's a couple clips from the 420 movie on there, as well as a variety of some of the Hollywood movies and some of the other independents that I've worked on. Oh, good. Too. Well, let's see that then. Okay, sure. thank you. You try another stunt like that, it'll be your brains on that wall. I used to work at Area 51 and I was in charge of technology research. And one day during a routine experiment, I noticed that the feds were watching me. Hello? Oh, hey Bert, what's up man? <laughs> cool. Uh, we still getting together later? What? Okay, thanks man. Dude, a club burned down. Guess which one? Hellfire. Thanks. <laughs> that was all you? Yeah, yeah. It was a variety of different looks there. Obviously, under this big old beard, there's a there's actual chin under there and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and in the hair, which is normally pretty curly like this, uh, in that one clip you saw was was straightened out. Uh, just trying to, you know, every time I do a movie, I try to reinvent my look a little bit based on the character and and what I know the filmmaker will allow me to sure. get away with mm -hmm. because sometimes they have a specific thing in mind and they don't want you to alter it or change it but for the most part you know you can have some fun with it and and do a variety of different things you know it's uh, I've always had a lot of respect for Lon Chaney and Lon Chaney Jr. because yeah. you would never know it was them unless you looked in the credits half the time you know and uh, and I fooled my own mother with some of those clips and some of those she had to ask me to circle who I was if there was more than one person in the shot because mm -hmm. she wasn't sure See, that's yeah. a sign of a great actor. Well, yes. well thank you. I, I'm, I'm getting there. I'd say acting is 
it's a lot like music. You never stop getting better at it. You just keep keep at it, and, mm -hmm. and if you think you're as good as you're ever going to get, you're wrong because you can always learn something new. Uh, you know, I, I still take acting classes. I still have an acting coach. I mean, I still try to do these things and stay proactive and make a new independent film, at least one short, one to two shorts every month, just to get keep practice and, and also practice editing too because you know as a filmmaker you know there's a lot in the editing realm that you can and can't do <laughs> and uh, but the computers have come a long way so as you know independence oh, speaking of that on the 420 movie this is a, a good thing for the independent filmmaker out there you don't need a lot of money to make a film that entire film was made for only twenty five hundred dollars and we shot it uh, or on weekends over the course of six months and then I just power edited and uh, and it came out later, so it was all volunteers. Uh, everybody in that movie I'd met on these other Hollywood movies here in town, and we all watched what the people were doing. We watched the lighting and the directing and the acting, and we took all that knowledge and flushed it down the toilet and made the 420 movie instead. And wow. The tagline is 79 minutes of your life you can't get back, and there's <laughs> a reason why I say that. But it's a comedy. You know, if you like comedies, you'll love this movie. That is great. You know, I wish we had 79 more minutes because you've, I think you're very inspirational for people that are trying to act and get in this business and, and uh, put out films as well, too. So I think it's great people can tune in and kind of look at you and say, yeah, well, if he can do it, I can do it, too. So will you well, come back is. with your next project and let us know what's going oh, on? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I got a, a couple short films coming up, and uh, we'll talk about those maybe next time. I look thank forward you. to it. Thanks a lot. All right, well, we'd like to thank you for joining us today on New Mexico Media Makers with our guests, Holly Adams and James Blackburn. We just wish it was longer. We're your hosts, Mike Gaba and Catherine Pilafas, and we'd like you to tune in next week so you can see what's hot and happening in New Mexico Media. Until then, just keep on smiling because you never know when you might be on camera, right, Kevin? Always. Always.